G'day guys and welcome back to me lab. Now, this video is our fourth installment in our Super Bogan Brothers Godot 4 platformer tutorial, tutorial, tutorial series. And we are going to be uh, continuing on with the creation of the enemy. This time we're gonna make it so our enemy dies when our player jumps on its head, just like the good old Goombas in Super Mario Brothers. So what are we doing? We are adding combat to our game. Why? Well, to start making it challenging and exciting to play. You are going to need to be able to understand and apply how to work with Area 2D nodes, uh, collision shapes and layers, but we're going to walk through it all. Well, your success criteria for today is that you've got an enemy who you can jump on the head of and it uh, dies just like a, a Goomba in Mario. So jump on into Godot and get our Toad scene up on the screen like I've got here. Now the first thing I want to do to tweak this so that it's going to work a little bit better is I actually want to change the collision shape we're using for our toad um, just because um, of how much it protrudes above it's 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 it will interfere with the dynamics of what we're trying to do next and it's really easy to do that so once you've got your toad scene up and loaded click on the collision shape that we made for the toad and then come over and just click on the uh, the little circle back which is like the reset button right for that feature and then we're going to click on empty and grab a rectangle and the reason I want to grab a rectangle is that's gonna actually match our toads shape a little bit better I think so we want to have our collision shape like that. That is going to leave this area above here, which we can use to detect our player's um, descent from above to try and kill our toad. So we've added or we've changed that collision shape. Now I want to click on the toad root node, and then we're going to add a new node to this scene. So we're going to click the plus sign, and then we're going to look for an area 2D. So you start typing in area, area 2D comes up enter to that one and now we want to rename it so it's always good to rename these things because we use area 2ds a lot for um, signals and, and controlling different things that are happening in the game so just leaving them all called area 2d could get really confusing um, so we're going to name this one hitbox and i'm going to follow that convention for the player and any other enemy we make as well now there's a warning here because when you use an area 2d you still need to add a collision shape to it so it knows what space to check so with our hitbox selected, we're then going to click plus again. So it'll add a child node to our area 2D and we want it to be a collision shape, which is what we've played around with already. And this collision shape still needs us to make the shape. So we come over to our inspector window where it says shape and empty. Let's grab a new rectangle shape and we're just going to put it so that it is just covering that area above the uh, the square we've already made like that so as our player descends from above the first part they're going to enter is that new collision shape that we've made excellent so now it's time to get towards the scripting stuff but first whilst we got this view up here let's just click on our hitbox over here again and it'll show you what we are going to be using uh, the particular area 2d for why it's good for this pro um, process so over here we've got our inspector window which we've spent some time with now click on the one that says node now this is a list of things um, to do with this scene that we can use to control some signals and things so we've got our area 2d here which we made just before right so our hitbox our area 2d we want to double click on the one that says body entered so double click on body entered and that's going to um, basically connect a signal from that area to our toad script so we click on connect that's then going to create a new little bit of a, a function in here for us fantastic so we've now got this function on hitbox body entered bit going on in here we should also have pass written in there too um, so there we go that's all connected up beautifully now, what I want to do before we change any code here, I want to do something to our player script. So in our player script, I want to add in this um, ready function. And all we're going to do in that ready function is add our player to a group called player. And this is just going to allow us to check what is coming through our hitbox. Is it a player? Is it an enemy? Is it something else? Um, if it's in the group player, then we know that it's time for that enemy to do something. So function ready, add to group player. That's all we do in our player script. Save that, click back into our toad. And what we're going to do is I'm going to replace this pass with, oops, that's not right. I'm going to replace this pass with a, uh, we're going to check if body, oh, I'm typing in the wrong screen now. Let's try that again. I will copy that across. How embarrassment. All right, there we go. If body is in group player, what are we going to do? We're going to queue free. And that just deletes this particular sprite basically out of the game. So 
Just to go over that again, because I've made a little bit of a meal of it, we want to add this function ready add to group player to our player.gd. So we're adding that in. I've put it in just above our physics process there. So function ready add to group player. We add that to the player script. Then in our toad script, when we connected the hitbox, it should have made this function on hitbox body entered body with pass written under it. We're deleting pass and we're putting in if body is in group player, Q free. So we're going to save all of that. And then we're going to test our game and see if it's worked. Now, yeah, that's right. Up was the way we jumped. So I'm going to jump up, come down, and our enemy disappears. Fantastic. And that's basically it for this particular one. In the next one, we're going to do something very similar, but we're going to flip it around so our enemy is the one that's uh, doing the damage. But uh, let's quickly have a look at our must main might now. So what must you do in this lesson? We've got to get those uh, area 2Ds and things set up so that your uh, toad can die. Uh, you may like to continue to explore your tile map, maybe making it a really good first level. Um, think back to you know Super Mario Brothers, you need it to be relatively easy um, so you don't scare players off, but also engaging enough that it's fun. Um, and you might like to create a new level scene and then um, we can show you how to link those two things together later on. So you should have created a um, system so that your player can jump on the head of your enemy and your enemy will die. Next time, we'll flip it around. We're going to have our player taking damage and dying uh, as a result of coming into contact with our enemy. And the quote I'd like to leave you with this week is from Seneca. And he once said that true happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. Have a good one. I'll see you next time.